Maple, hi Gail, hi YY, Gina, Maple, NP, EL. How are you guys doing? Hello, Sam. Hello, AJ. Hi, Liz. Hello, everyone. If you can hear me and see me, please drop something on the chat. Um, just so I know that it's all good. Hi, Jill. Hi, Maria. Hi, Nita. Um, my, my app has had a couple of tantrums today, so hopefully it will be fine. Uh, but yeah, just, just keep me posted to make sure that everything goes, goes well. We have a couple of minutes to go still. So um, we still have plenty of time, um, but yeah, I think the microphone is secured and I, I've got everything that I need, hopefully. Otherwise, it's too late now, so <laughs> we're just going to have to rock and roll. How is everyone doing this morning? Hi, Annette. You guys having a good day so far? It's a bit sort of, can't tell if it's miserable in here or not. The weather is still deciding whether it's going to rain or if it's actually all right. But yeah, and what is everyone joining me from today? We'd love to know where you're all coming from. I am in Southampton. No, no news in that front. I haven't gone to Spain yet. I've just come back from Spain, actually. So I am still here. Australia. So it's, is it, well, if it's my morning, then it must be nearly your, your bedtime, AJ. Is that correct? And you're in London, Nida. Hi. Up in the Midlands, lovely. Barbados! Oh my god, hi Gina. That's awesome. I used to know someone who, um, who lived in Barbados. Uh, she was an archaeologist and uh, she was really cool. Uh, 9, 9 p.m., yes. And, and oh my god, 5.30 a.m. Maple, you are a hero. I don't even, I can't even human at that time of the day. So kudos to you for being here so early. Annette, you're in Derbyshire. Yeah, the, the weather is a bit strange, isn't it, today? I, I generally don't know. It's, we are in that time of the year where it just... I'm, I'm not very fond of April in general as a, as a month. It, it could go if it was down to me, but hey. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, rhubarb for sure. Okay, and I'm about to go green. So it is time to start this, guys. So hello and thank you for joining me this morning or evening, depending where you're in the world. Uh, my name is Dr. Lilian Cespedes Gonzalez, but many of you know me already. And if you don't know me, please just call me Lily. I am not very fond of the academic titles that I have just because I did a PhD. And I have a very long Spanish surname that no one should ever have to pronounce. So Lily is just good. And today we are doing my rhubarb cordial. Um, it's a very, very simple recipe. Hi, Chrissy. We've just started, so you haven't missed anything. Very, very simple recipe. It's literally not going to take us more than half an hour, and you should have it all ready to go. Um, but I'll explain you why I'm doing this. So it's, it's a little bit of a cultural thing, because in Spain, where I come from, we don't really do anything like cordial or um, squash or ribena, all of those things that are really popular in the UK and in the US and many other Anglophone parts of the world. We, we don't we do not do that. We may have just natural juice and, and that's very typical of, of Spain to just drink straight up juice. Hi HL, hi Lynn, we've literally just gotten started so you haven't missed anything. But um, yeah, when I moved here to the UK and I found, you know, just a typical bottle of squash. For those of you who don't know, squash is just a a drink that you dilute with water um, or ribena or things like that. I was just fascinated by this magical drink that you just did by pouring some colorful liquid and then putting more water in there. And I was like, ooh, what's this? And I was completely in love with it for a really long time until I realized that it actually didn't really agree with my stomach at all. Um, and then I, I started doing some research and at least back in the day that squash and all of those things have changed a lot. But they had a lot of a lot of the flavorings were specific um, chemical components that I, I just didn't take to very nicely. So um, then I eventually found out that there was a way of doing it homemade, which was called cordial. It wasn't going to be exactly the same. And for those of you who haven't done or had cordial before, cordial is not as liquidy. It's it's got a more syrupy consistency. But I thought, well, hey, if it's sort of the same similar thing, I'll, I'll give it a go. And I... I have that. When I, you said squash, no, well, that's that's the thing. So squash is a drink in the UK. It's spelled in the exact same way. And if, if you've ever had Ribena, it's kind of the version of Ribena before you add the water. 
So it is kind of like a concentrated use. Yeah, I know. I was like, what is this magic? <laughs> it is like a concentrated use made from whatever flavors. Like one of the most common ones here is orange squash. So then you just throw water on it and it's kind of like orange juice and summer berries, which was my favorite until I, I couldn't have it anymore. So it, yes, it's, it's a very strange drink, um, but I, I think it's really cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, di diluting juice, that's it. And like I said, it just completely took me by surprise. So when I actually knew you could do something similar, but just at home uh, with a cordial, then I was like, well, then I have to try that. And one of the reasons why I really like making it with rhubarb is that, again, rhubarb is not that popular in Spain. We don't really use it a lot. And then I found out that if you don't clean rhubarb properly and you don't cook it properly, it's completely toxic. And I was like, ha, ah, it's a game. It's a game to see if I survive. This is amazing. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but no, it really did surprise me that rhubarb could actually be very, very toxic for people. So warning, guys, if you are working with rhubarb today, make sure that you clean it properly. I'm going to show you how I'm cleaning mine. It's actually very simple. Um, but yeah, and I'm not a very big baker. I, like those of you who have done quesada with me, that's that's one of the few things that I do with baking. But baking normally requires a very precise um, sort of component that it's not really my style. It makes me really anxious knowing that if I'm a millimeter off, then things could go wrong. Um, so I don't use it for like pies or things like that. But then I was like, I can make rhubarb cordial and it has a nice sort of sweet but not too sweet flavor. So that's that's why I make it with rhubarb. And we're gonna get started on how to do it. Yes, exactly. The, po the, the leaves from rhubarb are completely poisonous to humans. Um, and actually some parts of the skin can be if they are not cooked properly. That's the reason why when we cook rhubarb, it has to be properly done. And it's very easy to see if rhubarb is actually cooked properly. So yes. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, crazy. Um, so, what we need to make this cordial? We need some rhubarb. If you've chopped it for your garden or whatever, make sure that you have no leaves on it. Um, about 300 grams for what we're gonna do today is gonna be okay. We need 300 milliliters of water. We're gonna need 300 grams of sugar. Doesn't matter what sugar you use, I just prefer the Mara sugar, but if you're using white sugar or brown sugar, absolutely fine. Then the rest is kind of up to you, but I'll tell you how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna use these oranges. Um, we need both the peel and the juice for it. And I am gonna put cinnamon, because I love everything that tastes like cinnamon. And by doing this type of cordial, to me, it kind of tastes like Christmas, but cold. Uh, because it has that sort of like, you know, cinnamon, apple, warm drink from that you get from Christmas. And normally in this recipe, I put ginger. Haha. <laughs> but I had a technical problem this morning, which was that I went to open my spice cupboard. I completely forgot that uh, my ginger had gone off and it was completely solid. So instead today, I'm actually putting a little bit of anise star. I'm not going to put a whole one. I'm just going to put a part of it. And... Actually, I really like the flavor that anise star comes into this. I can't have alcoholic drinks. So anise star is a way of sort of giving it that punch without actually putting any alcohol in it. But for those of you who may want to use this as a mixer, in general, this recipe of rhubarb cordial goes really well with gin particularly. So that's that's uh, uh, an option there for those of you who, who uh, may want to try that. And if you don't have any ginger or uh, star anise or whatever, Lynn, Honestly, just put more cinnamon. I mean, that's my answer to everything. Cover everything in cinnamon. It will taste delicious. <laughs> but anyway, um, later on, when we actually finish the, um, the uh, cordial, we're going to need somewhere where to store it and we're going to need to sieve it just to make sure that we actually have the, the syrupy liquid itself rather than the actual goop. So let's get started. Right, I'm going to turn on my hob. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the water on to boil. I'm not going to put it on in full. I'm just going to put it on five or four. And we're just going to leave that in there in the meantime. Right. We're going to take, well, I'm going to actually point you further down so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to take the measurement of sugar, which is 300 grams. I don't use scales. I use measuring cups because I am weird like that. 
Right. Where are we? Times flour, sugar. Woo! Spills everywhere. This happens when you cook with me, guys. Like when we were doing the quesada the other day, the flour got, went everywhere. Like honestly, I'm the most clumsy person in the planet. I shouldn't be allowed in a kitchen. It's it is dangerous. I think it's actually gonna take all the sugar that I have in here. You know what? It's just gonna be easier. Yeah. There we go. That is 300 grams of sugar on my cup, and I'm putting that straight in there. This is gonna take about 15 minutes to start boiling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I honestly, I'm, 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 I'm a disaster. While that is um, boiling, I'm actually going to start prepping everything else. So what I'm going to start with is these two, just because actually doing the lemon juice is going to take me a long time because I'm using a manual user. Um, for those of you who may have an electric one, this will probably go a lot quicker. Right. I'm also using two only because I had two spare oranges that I didn't know what to do with. It's up to you how much of it you use. I do like the orangey flavor quite a lot, personally. So it, it just works well for me. Right. Ah, you're going to see me struggling with this. It's honestly, it's a, it's a real workout for your hand. Like if you haven't done your, your warm up today, guys, this is, this is going to be great. I like to measure that way too, but baking, yes, uh, honestly, I, I can't. That's the reason why I don't normally bother with baking. I'm in awe of everyone that can bake. And I used to have a friend of uni at university who was completely insomniac. So at night, because she couldn't sleep, she would um, do her university work while baking, which meant when we wake up in the morning, the entire house smelled like cookies and cupcakes. Honestly, it was great, but I just I just didn't know how she could do it. Um, it's, it's always mesmerized me, to be honest. Right. Okay, that is one peel of orange. And I'm not even going to bother taking the, the pulp out. I'm literally just going to throw it in as it is. And here we go on to the other half of the orange. This is, like I said, this may take some time. Get the juicer at you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, I, I've, I've been meaning to buy a... My parents have an electric one. It's from like the very early 90s and it's still going. And my mom, every time I go home in the morning, my mom makes fresh orange juice for everyone because she has this wonderful electric user that does everything for you. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to use all of this. And part of the pulp, if it goes into the juice, it's just going to give it extra. You know, the only thing that we're doing with the orange is add the juice afterwards. So it's just going to give you the same sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I... I I really envy her for having that electric juicer and I've been meaning to buy one, but they are, they are really not a thing anymore. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of funny. Like I, I never imagined my life without a juicer like that one. And a lot of places you just can't find those anymore. Or use key limes, yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. That's how I cook training. Honestly, I am, I am very much one of those people like, I am, I am very good at opening the cupboards and making something out of what there is already in the cupboards. I'm not so fond of um, following a recipe as much. I mean, I can follow a recipe, but, you know, not, not to that point. Right, I'm going to bring down the heat to three just because, you know, this juicing is taking a while. Um, and we don't, the thing is, we don't want the cordial to caramelize. So I'm going to show you very quickly how this is looking in the pan. It's kind of like goop. So as you can see, we have our just thrown in oranges. This is literally, it kind of looks like a dark caramel type of thing. Um, and that's how we want it to be for now. Afterwards, it's going to look, well, a lot more clear once we start, you know, doing this properly. Right, back, back to the juicing efforts here, guys. I read recipes and then change it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's for me, it's very much like that. And, and not just that, you know, recipes are great for ideas, in, in my opinion. But then, well, you can just customize it, right? We, we don't all have the same taste. Um, we just, you know, it's, it's just easier if you know what you like and then work with what you have, in, in my opinion. And yes, mold wine, that's exactly it. 
well, you know, I have one of these, I think it's this one. I have one of these things from Ikea, which is like a mulled wine, but non-alcoholic version. And I haven't opened it yet because I just keep on doing cordial. Uh, and actually that one from Ikea is nice, but um, it can be a bit too sweet sometimes. So it, I kind of have to be in the mood for it whilst the cordial, you know, because then you can add as much water as you want to cordial. Then it's slightly different. You kind of... Right, okay. We're done with this. Now I'm literally just going to grab the juice and add it now. And now we can bring the heat up a little bit. So the rest of the process should be fine on five. That's what I have it on now. Right. Now we're going to get to the very serious business of preparing this rhubarb. Like I said, if you have it with leaves still, make sure you cut off all the leaves. Very important. And I always cut the ends. Always, always, always. No matter what I'm working with, the ends go. Just because they tend to have funny textures or they could have residues that, well, you just don't know what they are. I've already washed mine, by the way. So if you haven't washed yours, make sure that you do that. Um, right here, you're going to see how I butcher this rhubarb because it doesn't really have any other any other name. I'm not very kind to the things I, I cook. Now, if when you're cleaning the rhubarb, you find like this one, that it has like some things that look a bit darker, cut them out as well, just to be safe um, with any other type of fruit or plant. I probably wouldn't be so fussy, but with rhubarb, we do seriously have to be careful. See, this one, this one is actually no good at all. I'm not going to use that one. Oh, that's just, that's just a leaf. That's actually not, not a biggie. Okay. Right. And if you are particularly fussy, because I know some people who are very fussy, you can actually peel the rhubarb um, skin, like just with a peeler or whatever. It generally, you know, it's not going to make a difference. I do like keeping the skin on just because I like sort of giving it that purpley, pinky type of color to my drink, just to be fancy. But it's honestly not a big deal. Right, now what we're going to do is just cut it into pieces. You can cut it into stripes. I don't have the patience for that, so I'm just going to literally just chop it in sort of cubes. Well, you can't really cut something that is not cubed shape into cubes, but you know what I mean, into, into chunks. Let's just say generic chunks in here. Right, the water is just starting to bubble now, which is exactly what we want. I'm running out of space in the tiniest chopping board I grab. Oh my God. I'm just going to start literally throwing them in there. Not even looking. As long as they're going in the water, I honestly don't care. Right. This one, the big one is a bit chunkier. And I'm just going to have to go at it more individually. There we go. One, two, three, chop, chop, chop. This is really not like the fancy cooking shows like with, you know, those those TV people like Nigella Lawson and and the, the others that always tell you something really nice and relaxing while you're preparing something. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it can actually be quite stressful watching me cook right now. <laughs> You'd probably be thinking, this poor girl, like, what is she doing with her life? <laughs> but honestly, I am having fun. So, you know, I always say, as long as you're having fun, it doesn't really matter if it looks... Like, you're making a, a complete fool of yourself. At the end of the day, we have one life. Enjoy it. Do what makes you happy. In this case, it's making rhubarb cordial for me. So there we go. This is the real shit. Oh, my God. This is definitely the, the reality of what happens in the kitchen. <laughs> right. So I'm going to show you how this cooking pan is looking like. It's not very glamorous, mind you. Right. So here we are. There is our... our completely thrown in <laughs> rhubarb and um, orange. As you can see, we're starting to see some bubbles. I'm not going to move the heat now until the rhubarb is really, really soft. So in about 10 minutes, the rhubarb is actually going to start dissolving. You're going to see how the filaments start coming off. It doesn't need to become pulp. Just as long as it's soft and it starts looking mushy, we are good. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are finding this funny because I, I do get so nervous. Sometimes people are going to think I'm crazy. Uh, I mean, I am, which is, I'm not going to lie to you. I am. But there you go. 
Right. This is the moment when I put what I consider to be a healthy amount of cinnamon, which is not necessarily what you may consider a healthy amount of cinnamon. So from this moment on, honestly, it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to make sure that there is plenty of cinnamon in here. I just really, really love cinnamon. Cinnamon is one of my favorite flavors in the world. Um, we do have a another traditional Spanish um, dessert, which I may do for you guys at some point because I really like having it in the summer. It is called arroz con leche. It literally means rice with milk. And it's kind of like, it is similar to a rice pudding or the rice pudding that people in, in the UK and in America may be familiar with. It's not exactly the same. And we have it called with a lot of cinnamon. Um, but in general, we just put a lot of cinnamon in, in most Spanish cooking. So I'm, I'm taking the top off. This is what I mean, a healthy amount of cinnamon. I'm just going to go let it flow. Right. And that's probably enough cinnamon or my mom will probably think I'm, you know, far too gone. I'm going to show you my healthy amount of cinnamon in there. There you go. That's what I consider a healthy amount of cinnamon. Um, it actually, I'm, I must say, it tastes a lot nicer if you have cinnamon on, on the actual, you know, on not on the already processed powder. Um, it, it tastes a lot nicer if you just have the actual cinnamon, uh, not cane. Oh my God, what is it called? You know what I mean. Cinnamon on, on the flesh. Oh my, my brain went completely blank in there. Stick. There you go. Thank you. Cinnamon stick, of course. Right, and now, like I said, because I don't have a um, cin um, ginger, I'm going to put just a little bit of star aniseed. So I'm literally just going to break it. I have about half of it, and I'm just going to throw it in there. And that's just going to be, like I said, to give it a bit of a punch. Right, I'm going to put the spices out of the way so we don't cause any any problems in the kitchen. At this moment, it's quite useful to give it a stir just to make sure that, you know, things are mingling together. So we grab our wooden spoon. I'm going to point you towards here is again and just, yeah, just make sure that things are, make sure things are mingling. There we go. Mm, oh, it does smell like Christmas. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, remember to I definitely need to remember to add more cinnamon. Honestly, I I I can't I can't live without it. I, I actually put it on top of ice cream, which is something that I know a lot of people think I'm crazy for. But I, I love um one of my favorite ice creams is actually something that we don't have in the UK. It's um it's Argentinian. If you've been with any of our Argentinian guides or with um Mickey and Adri, they do a lot of Argentinian cuisine and they do um Dulce de leche, which you can do at home. It's actually very easy. It's kind of like you just grab condensed milk and you bake it or you put it on a bamari and then it, it kind of gets that caramelized feeling. I, I love that stuff. I can actually eat it with a spoon. And my favorite ice cream is that. So I normally get that one and then I just put a ton of cinnamon on top of that. And I'm one of those weird persons that when she goes to a Costa or Starbucks or something like that and they ask, would you like chocolate on your coffee or your drink, whatever it is? I go, no, but if you have some cinnamon, I'll happily take that. Which is actually one of the reasons why normally when I'm out, I drink um, spice chai, spice chai latte, because it has that cinnamony, spicy flavor that I really, really like. Cinnamon and toast and honey toast is so good. Oh my God, you've literally just mentioned two of my favorite things in the world, cinnamon and honey. I could eat honey till the end of time. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> when we were really, really little, my auntie and I, my auntie is three years younger than me. I know, crazy. Um, we used to sit uh, on like the kitchen table and in Spain between lunch and dinner, we have another sort of meal called merienda because we have dinner quite late. And my granny used to make fresh juice for us. And then we will get a ripe loaf of bread, you know, the proper crusty thick um, stuff and just toast it and cover it with um, eucalyptus honey, which is one of my favorites. And just literally eat that, which in hindsight probably wasn't, you know, the healthiest thing for a seven year old and a four year old. But we loved it and it was a Sunday treat. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, I buy cinnamon in big bags as I live. Oh my God, that's amazing. 
Yes, well, oh, binge tea with cinnamon. Mm, that is that is really good. And yes, cinnamon in coffee is honestly the best thing. My mom is not too fond of cinnamon. So, oh, cardamom. Cardamom is delicious. Um, I found out one day completely by accident because another thing that I really love with cinnamon is cinnamon buns. Um, there is a bakery in London. If you're ever in London, guys, go to this bakery because it's awesome. It's just off the road of Shaftery Avenue and it's called Fabrique. So I went there. I completely, I, I literally was famished. I needed something to eat. And I just pointed at the buns, not realizing they didn't have any cinnamon buns. And instead they had cardamom buns. Oh my God, they are delicious. I can't even begin to tell you how amazing that stuff is. I am making myself hungry as well, Lynn. Like, honestly, I had breakfast. It was a pretty good breakfast. And I'm already thinking I probably should have lunch as soon as we finish this. So this is now looking good. Right, I'm going to bring you here to show you or rather you know I'm gonna fish the rhubarb out of here to show you because this is really the key element everything else is cooked as long as the rhubarb looks like this then we're good right can you see that this rhubarb is starting to look like it's like butter like it's melting the big pieces still need a little bit so it probably needs about five more minutes at most and then this is literally gonna be done but yeah, that's, that's the type of consistency that we want when the rhubarb is already so soft. Everything else, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's just sugar and water, which are already mixed pretty much from the beginning. The orange juice is, again, it's just already there. So as soon as the rhubarb is cooked, then it, it doesn't really require that much. So it's actually very simple to do. Um, it's just, I don't think it's something a lot of people do much at home these days. Um, so anyway, that's, that's why I do it. But yeah. It's, it is great. And then depending on what you're going to use to uh, sort of save it in the fridge, I'm literally, what I'm going to do is I have this, it's actually a sangria jar, which I, I don't, I don't drink sangria, but it, it's just as good. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to put it here until it's cool. And then eventually when it's properly cool, because ceramic keeps the heat balance quite well until until it's cool and when it's cool then I'll transfer it to some glass bottles that are that have been sterilized or clean and then I just throw it in the fridge if you keep it in the fridge and it's properly sealed and tight um, it will last for about a month you will have to make sure to shake it every now and then because otherwise you're gonna have the proper decomposition where you get all of the sediment at the bottom and the rest at the top and it doesn't look terribly pretty um, but that's that's how that's how I'm gonna how I'm going to store it, just literally on, on glass bottles. Also, I don't know if I have any at hand. Um, another one which is really good is this, these flasks. If you have any of these thermal flasks, um, it doesn't, if, and actually if you have a thermal flask in, in the fridge, it will last longer because it will just, you know, these things are designed to keep things at a specific temperature for a lot longer period of time. Um, and I normally keep keep it in this one as well because this is what I usually take on tour when I'm touring with you guys outside so then I just need to topping it up with water and keeps me hydrated as I go along which is actually really nice to keep going I will trust later as lots of rhubarb in the garden excellent let me know if you guys try it or, or you make your own let me know because I, I always love to see you know how how people do this well I, you know I didn't think about using a flask crazy it was completely out of accident one day uh, when I realized that the bottle I was going to use was, let's just not say it was in a very good state. Um, I will not give you nightmares with that. And I, I desperately needed somewhere where to put the cordial. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just use the flask, whatever. And and then I was like, actually, this is super convenient. And then I thought, well, effectively, it's the same that a bottle is just, you know, thermally proved. So what the hell? And And that's why I sort of have moved towards the flask option when I go out for now on just because it helps it preserve a lot longer and you know when we are out touring and whatever you don't know what the weather is going to be like and if you have a particularly hot day if you have water just in a bottle it just you know ends up being lukewarm which is not a very pleasant feeling so it's it's a much nicer refreshment for sure I just grabbed my rhubarb and then saw this and came right in time awesome ah I'm so glad yeah this well honestly I sort of did it at this time of the day because well, I thought it would be nice if I can have it later on in the evening because I, I need to 
I am working tonight, I'm doing some research um, for a couple of articles I'm writing. So uh, it will keep me, it will keep me going for certainly a long while. Right, I think, I'm just gonna stab it. Yes, just so you can see, that's the biggest chunk of rhubarb and it's now completely melting. So this is literally done, guys. Right, so, ooh, look at the mess that I've done in here. Ah, honestly, never invite me to cook in your kitchen. It will be like, like if a child just went through it. Right, I'm just gonna transfer this off the hob into one of my hot pads. Um, I'm gonna move you over here so you can see what this looks like. So, as you can see, oh, it's quite steamy. There we go, that's better. So as you can see, where is my, I was gonna say my stick, but it's actually just my, as you can see, there is not as much water as we put in here. It's all been evaporating. The water has quite a caramelly type of texture. We need to just let it cool down for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna transfer it onto, onto our sangria jar. This is gonna be hilarious, by the way, because um, you've seen how clumsy I am, guys. <laughs> I am not gonna be pouring it directly from the, uh, from the jug into the thing. Um, I am just gonna be using one of this. If you have a muslin bag, it's just gonna be a lot smoother. I do like it quite chunky, to be honest. So I don't mind if it's just, you know, too, too much on, on the chunky side of things. Um, but for the sake of actually, you know what, I'm being a bit silly. It's, it's gonna be easier doing it here because I have more space. Right, sorry about that, guys. We're coming back to this part of the kitchen, my bad. Okay, so yes, I'm literally just gonna be scooping it up with my, uh, wooden, not my wooden spoon, with my ladle, which is actually somewhere in the kitchen. I know it's here, it should be here. There we go. So what, what I normally do is I just grab all the chunks first and then I sort of mash them on top of the thing and then sift the water through it. And yes, doing it over the sink would be the reasonable thing to do. However, I have a tendency of burning myself no matter how careful I am because I'm super clumsy, honestly. My, in my house, I'm actually called Lily Butterhands, just so you all know. Like, since I was a little girl <laughs> and it's not changed, my mom always, when we go shopping, my mom always takes a bag that has the eggs just in case I mess it up, even now that I am nearly 31 years old. So if my own mother doesn't trust me with the eggs, you guys should definitely not trust me with this over the sink. Like, it's, it's just like that. <laughs> it's not. I'm not even exaggerating. This is this is my life, right? I'm gonna bring this over here, and let's 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 hope that I don't. Uh, I'm I'm actually gonna have to unplug the microphone because it's not gonna be it's not gonna be long enough otherwise. And this is the reason why this is dangerous. Give me one sec. Right. Awesome. Danger has been averted for another day. Thank goodness. Right. <laughs> I'm glad you find this funny. Honestly, I, I normally think people just think I am neurotic. So I'm, I'm glad you guys think I'm more or less sane. Right, I think this is probably the best angle. So literally, I'm just scooping things through. And as you can see, the juices are coming through. At this stage, we can get rid of the um, big orange peels. That's another reason why I use this because, well, we don't we don't really need it anymore. It's it's helped us. It's it's done its service. So do make sure you take the um, the uh, peel and the zest off and scoop it out. I've just done that to save us some hassle. And then I literally just just mush like this. I just mush it like that. It helps getting more chunks of the rhubarb. Like I said, it's entirely because um, I just like that. If you don't like it, just put it through the muslin bag, pour it all over and it will be absolutely fine. But you know, each to their own. 
I have I have my strange way of doing things and mushing rhubarb into my rhubarb accordion is one of the things I do. <laughs> so there we go. And yeah, literally this is, I mean, it's almost done. Um, shouldn't be too much. Um, you can probably go through a whole bottle of this in one dinner with a liter of water. Like I would say, you know, for people who maybe don't like it very strong, the ratio of what we've done, which is 300 mils of water and 300 grams of sugar um, under 300 ish of rhubarb is probably a good ratio for um, a, a, a liter of water um, for those of you wondering um literally i can't remember maple i think i saw something on the internet tried it once hated it um <laughs> and then i did it my own way so i did keep the i i was speaking with someone who um, I'm friends with, she has her own allotment. So she does a lot of stuff with her own vegetables and uh, fruits and stuff like that. And she told me that honestly, the biggest and most important part about making cordial, any type of cordial, is that you keep the, the fruit or veg, sugar and water ratio to more or less the same thing. And she was like, as long as you do that, you literally can do whatever you want with it. And I was like, well, that's literally all, all the encouragement I needed. So thank you for that. Love it. Right, this. I don't think I can pulp this rhubarb anymore, guys. That's literally it. Right, I am going to dispose of that in the um, bin very quickly, just to avoid any spillages around. There we go. And now it is the moment where I'm just going to pour things in here. Please pray for me because this is normally when things go really wrong. Oh my God, no spillage. You guys are my lucky charm. I'm inviting you every single time I'm doing this because normally this is already gone everywhere when I do it on my own. So you guys clearly are, um, are I don't know, controlling this somehow. Hey, amazing. No spillage. See, it's all, it's all in there. Um, oh, there's some conversations. Chase, it used to make rhubarb crumble and pie. Yes, I, I mean, I love it. I'm just, I just suck at bacon, so I don't bother doing things like that. But it is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Can the pool be used for something else? Yes, if you actually, if you do rhubarb crumble or anything like that, um, you can then reuse the pulp and put it on a, on a jar, keep it in the fridge. It lasts for, it lasts okay at mostly one day or two. And actually... I, I know someone who uses it to do um, panna cotta and instead of using the berries, they use the, the rhubarb pulp on top of it. So there you go. Muffin, oh yeah, muffins and cupcakes with rhubarb pulp will be amazing. Yes, it, it, exactly, Gina. Doesn't it just smell like Christmas? That's why I love it so much. It's, it is Christmas in the summer, which is honestly my ultimate dream because I love Christmas. Um, Christmas is very, very important in my family. Uh, we, we just love it. We're not really religious, but it's just a nice time of the year for us to get together and to just spend time together, particularly since I left home. I think it's become even more important because that's the only time of the year where, you know, we all are together no matter what. So there we go. Okay, right. So... I'm going to show you this on the jar. Well, it's probably quite dark, so you cannot see a lot in there, but it is there actually. It's about maybe halfway through the jar. And that's, that's the rhubarb cordial done. I'm going to just grab a very small spoon to show you. Well, actually, maybe not so small spoon because otherwise you won't be able to see anything. This is the color and the texture. Mmm. It tastes really good, guys. That star anise has really given it the ultimate punch. Mmm. Oh, wow. That's gonna be amazing with water. I mean, it's really nice warm, so if you like it more like a punch, honestly, it will be absolutely fine. 
but it will be super, super refreshing with a bit of cold water. Um, like I said, you can use sparkling water. I'm just not a big fan of it, but it, it will go nice with some sparkling water just to give it a bit of a, of a juice. And if you like alcohol, the best one that it will go with, in my opinion, is gin. But you can also put it with some rum and it will kind of be like a pirate punch. So that's another good one in there. But yeah. I'm just going to catch up with the, um, with the chat, guys. One second. I was thinking of... it. Oh, yes, nectar. Ah, nectarine. Very nice. That would be incredibly yummy indeed. Yes, I mean, honestly, once that you know how to do this, you can do it with any fruit. It's absolutely, absolutely fine. Um, I add more sugar. Yes, um, that's actually, that's a really good thing of, of doing gel to make it more like a jam and then spread it on, on toast or ooh, a crescent, toasted crescent with that. You've given me a great idea, Jill. Watch this space. When I was on my juicing spree, I <laughs> amazing. You could... Chia seeds and it would make, oh, oh yes, because chia seeds have that funny texture, don't they? Mm, mm. You guys are giving, oh, you guys are making me hungry now. Very hungry. Or eat a gulp, oh, with porridge. I, I actually have porridge um, with oats every single morning and kefir instead of milk, so I may try that. Rhubarb punch, yes, amazing. Overnight oats. My stomach is rumbling too. <laughs> awesome. I'm craving rhubarb crumble now. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly craving everything that you guys have said. And I can't have everything for my own sake. So, that, <laughs> I, but it's, you know, there are some really good ideas there. And I think we should definitely try some of these. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, unfortunately, this is all I have time for today, guys. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Gina, if you've been cooking with me, I would love to know what you make of the... Uh, of the cordial i would really really like to know how it came out and, and when you guys try your own or or do any of these amazing things that you've been mentioned on the chat please please tell me because i need to know um but yeah that's all as you can see it's very very easy um i really really just think anyone can do this it doesn't really require much skill i mean you've seen the mess that i've made if if i can get through that anyone can so so yeah simple as uh but honestly thank you so so much um, if you have any questions about this or anything else, like I said, you're always very, very welcome to drop me a message. Um, and for those of you interested, I shall remind you tomorrow I have two tours. James the Roman reenactor is back and he's not actually going to be back until probably after spring season. So this is probably the last chance you have to catch him until July, I suspect. Uh, I will be doing just a, my ordinary walk of Southampton. To redeem myself from all of the troubles that I had on Tuesday and then on Monday I will be doing my uh, at-home tour of the Perseus cycle from uh, Southampton Art Gallery and I'll be doing a raffle with the postcards from the gallery as well so if you're interested in art and want to hear about Greek mythology that would be honestly a very fun session and that's all for today oh thank you so much for everyone who followed and for all the tips and Honestly, all of your amazing comments, you're all wonderful. So seriously, thank you so, so much. It generally means a lot to me. So thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being so kind and for spending some time with me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll see you soon at some other point. And like I said, feel free to reach out at any moment. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, I hope the sun eventually shines wherever you are. And honestly, take care and thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care.